All righty. Hello again. Uh, my name is still Peter Hatra. Um, nothing has changed since this morning. I'm just going to give you a quick update on what the Exorg Foundation was up to over the last year. So first of all, uh, Exorg Foundation is the foundation behind Exorg, non-profit, uh, 501c3 in the US. We've got a board of directors, uh, eight people strong. Um, as you can see here, the list with the uh, various associations of employers. Um, I'm the uh, secretary of the board and Stuart is the treasurer, wherever Stuart sits at the moment. There he is. Um, at this point, if you did... Oh yeah, true. <laughs> right, so Stuart is the, in the official uh, position of Oracle. <laughs> Clearly I was out of coffee on that. <laughs> um, at, at this point, so uh, Stuart is both the Oracle and the treasurer. And uh, so if you have any bills that you need to uh, submit, uh, please uh, give the receipts to Stuart over the course of the conference. Um, that way he can uh, give you a check or whatever antiqu antiquated. You're referring to people who are being sponsored? Correct. Okay. Yes, correct. So people who uh, have legitimate claims. Um, <laughs> um, so first of all, Exorg membership. All of you should be members of Exorg. If you're not, please join up. Um, it gives you a whole bunch of benefits, such as access to some documents, like visa specs, I think we still have. And it, of course, gives you uh, the various um, things, like you can apply for travel sponsorship, and so on and so forth. Uh, site is there, members.x.org. We have uh, elections uh, coming up probably in January or something again. So being a member gives you the uh, chance to uh, vote for the next board, board or even run for the uh, uh, next election. All right. Uh, first of all, birthdays. We've had two big birthdays. Sorry, yes? Uh, yes, you need to retick your membership every year. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, just to repeat for the, the video, um, usually when the election emails go out, people go, when they log in for the election, then, then you have to rejoin in, anyway. Well, most people do this when they register for the like for the election, uh, so that they can vote. Um, this is some re you need to be a member uh, to, in order to vote for the election. So people usually do it then. We're also and since um, we have an election roughly every year, um, this is done pretty much automatically. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, right. Yeah, so the, uh, um, I think currently we have about 80-something 80, 80 members, um, which means that we've had 84 people, I think, register for the conference. So the four of you who are not members, please join up. <laughs> um, anyway, so birthdays. Um, we've had two birthdays this year. Uh, the X-Window system itself has reached its 30th birthday on the 19th of June. And the XARC Foundation itself has had the 10 birthdays on the uh, 22nd of January. So Exarch Foundation itself is uh, it's quite old already by now. Um, these are modern times, so hacking on an old winding system isn't enough anymore. So we uh, have, uh, since last year, we've uh, added a Google Plus account. Um, Exarch Foundation is the name, you can easily find it. Uh, we've got a Twitter account where you can follow us. We've even got a YouTube channel. If anyone is interested in setting up like a Pinterest account or something, just contact me. I'm sure there's uh, plenty of exciting things you can post there. Uh, let's go to the actual work. Um, Google Summer of Code. We've had seven uh, projects accepted for Google Summer of Code this year. Um, four completed successfully. Congratulations. I think two at least are here. If you could, uh, one, two. Um, projects are listed here with the mentors in brackets. Um, two students, so three students uh, did not complete. Uh, two of them disappeared. And uh, one of them uh, was just unable to stick to the, the milestones, so we had to fail them. So, but still, Four out of seven is not too bad a result. Um, we had uh, two projects for the endless vacation of code. So first of all, endless vacation of code is Xorg's equivalent to Google Sum of Code. Um, with the big differences, you can pretty much start at any point in time. It still has more or less the same time schedule, so two and a half months or whatever it is. Um, but as opposed to Sum of Code that runs every year at exactly the same time, um, you can start, say, in December or whenever you come up, which is uh, quite a benefit for people, especially in the Southern Hemisphere, for example. Um, yeah, and also uh, Google Summer of 
Google sum of code is obviously paid by Google. Um, endless vacation of code is paid by the uh, Exorc Foundation. So we've had two projects this year. One successful one by Roy, who is, uh, just gave the talk before. Um, one student we had to fail because uh, he was un unfortunately unable to stick to the milestones. So we had one out of two. Um, I think two projects is probably the uh, highest number of evil projects we've ever had in one year. Uh, I think in recent years we just had one um, or none. So unfortunately, Evoc is not particularly well documented. We try to push people to it, but um, it's a couple of lessons we've learned, um, I think, from, from the Evoc this year. Um, generally, our rule set at the moment is it's like GSOC, except for we pay for it. Uh, it turns out that saying like GSOC is a bit too generic, and it works great when everything works great, but it doesn't work that great when things don't go so well. Um, so right now, one of the things we just need to improve is it's a bit unclear at the moment how we handle Evoc. Uh, applications, so they get sent to the board list, but then we need to figure out, okay, who actually commits to answering them, accepting them, and so on and so forth. Um, we need to deal with stricter deadlines. Right now, we're fairly lenient um, in, in how to handle it, um, which is great when everything works out well, it doesn't matter, but when things fail, suddenly being too lenient can actually bite you in the ass. So um, sometimes just being flexible is actually painful um, because it's really hard to justify afterwards why were you, flex why were you lenient with that person and they succeeded, and why weren't you lenient with those and they failed, is that acceptable? Um, so one of the things you get from that is just real and perceived bias, um, and that's just one thing we just need to really um, work out and avoid. Um, we need better communication requirements with the board, so we need something where at least either the mentor or the student just regularly updates the board as well, so we kind of know what is happening. Um, at the moment, it, like for the last two projects, it was pretty much us just pinging the mentors all the time. And uh, one of the problems that we just generally have to fix as a project is that the, uh, the base requirements to actually hack on any Xwork project are really, really high. Um, especially for something that is limited to a two, two and a half month time frame, um, you need to pretty much have to have a running start when you join a project. But in order to get to that point, you have to be quite well versed in how to build, how to submit patches, how to work. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done before you can even apply for it. Which is, in one, on one hand, is good. It's good for us because that way the people who sign up for Evoc or get granted the Evoc project, um, we know we're going to get something out of them. It's not a good way to get new committers. Um, yeah, so the, the summary of Evoc handling is just we just need to have, I think, more and, and better defined rules on, on our wiki that we can point people to. Uh, travel sponsorship. Um, we've approved seven tra travel sponsorship this year. Uh, one for Jake um, for LWN. Um, we've had had <laughs> in the past that uh, excellent coverage of XTCs. Um, we have three GSOC slash EVOC students who got travel sponsorship. Our general rule is that if you complete GSOC or EVOC um, successfully, you can apply for uh, travel sponsorship. Um, and we've got three others, uh, Alex, David, and Jamie. All of you up there, please get the receipts to um, Stuart. Um, we have, whoops, that slide is a bit, um, we have uh, signed up this year, we have signed up to the Outreach Program for Women, which is sort of like, as a summary, it's sort of like GSOC for people who identify as women. Um, the rules are a bit more complex than that because the whole topic is a bit more complex, but um, that's a the rough summary. Um, we have signed up for one paid participant in round number nine, which goes from December to March, if I'm correct here. Um, so great, or great for people in the southern hemisphere. That's like right over the summer, summer break. Um, information is on that wiki page up there. Uh, we need more projects. We need more mentors. If you do have a project that is interesting, if you do want to mentor, please add yourself to the list there. Um, so far, I think we've got two applicants that are sort of in the progress of, of um, checking out what they can do if it's worth doing. But any, any more is, is, is better, of course. And we do have the money that, if need be, we can increase the number of participants um, by some amount. Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, the application period ends on the 20th or 22nd of October. I just looked it up before and I can't remember. So 20th or 22nd. So, okay, so 22nd, as it says on the door. I must have walked past that a few times. Huh? Um, yeah, so if, if you have any, any projects in mind, put it on the wiki page. And um, yeah, just be a mentor. Uh, SPI, um, for those of you who, uh, who were here last year, so last year we said, yeah, we're going to 
roughly dissolve the XORG Foundation as a separate entity and join SPI, Software in the Public Interest, uh, mainly because the eight of us were all great uh, when it comes to developing stuff. We're not particularly great when it comes to legal issues in the US um, and sorting out the various financial obligations and the various legal obligations that you have to do as a um, non-profit organization in the US. Um, I guess four or something of us not actually being US citizens doesn't help either. Um, so, yeah, so last year we decided, yes, we're going to join SPI. Um, we've done some progress in that manner. We've uh, rewritten some of the bylaws or changed the bylaws so that it should be compatible now. But in the end, we're still in that idling period of we need SPI to sign off on it, some contact issues that's just been stalling and so on and so forth. So right now what we need to do is get those bylaws actually sorted out. Um, once, we get, once we have them sorted out, we need to get the whole membership base to vote on, yes, we are actually going to dissolve XORG as a separate entity, join SPI. And the other thing is we need to compile a list of assets that XORG as a foundation currently owns. Um, I think that's a legal requirement of joining um, SPI because we need to transfer those assets over. Um, other than that, as I said, like some pro progress, but nothing uh, particularly uh, exciting has happened since then. Last thing, XTC. Uh, many thanks to Martin, of course, for organizing it. Um, that's Yeah, he's, he's done it pretty much all on his own, um, as far as I can tell. So, and yeah, so far it's been excellent, first day. Yeah. Uh, we were going to have a separate uh, side meeting, but it looks like we won't. So, um, sorry for taking everyone's attention. For the sponsorees who are outside the United States, especially, uh, also for the uh, US based sponsorees, if we can get. Um, all of your receipts and all of your uh, numbers down for um, payment and put a check in your hand before, the, before you leave the conference, it will be better for all of us. So I would uh, strongly encourage uh, sponsorees to uh, give me that information and uh, come up to me. I'll get my email address and uh, send me your stuff, and we'll try to get you uh, paid back. Thank you. Well, for all the uh, non-US people who get sponsorship, a check is like the thing your parents used in the 80s. You know, where you write the money on it and get a signature. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it from the uh, XORG side of things. Any questions? All right, you're released for the day. Happy, happy pubbing.